All right. Yeah, transition to that. And three. And two. And one. It's Sunday, November 10th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, uh, 531. And uh, I've been up since like 2.30. And it's all because of Bear for one notifications. Before I went to I mean, sleep, I didn't turn off the. I didn't mute it. Oh, I would just. I mean, were you were you were actually able to get online on the weekend? I was asleep me, while and I, I was at home. Sip my water. <laughs> no, 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 dear. Um, um, I okay. So we're gonna start with a little diatribe about Miss 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 um, Bear Formula One. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Um, I couldn't get on at all this weekend until this evening, and that includes Thursday and Friday and Saturday and this morning and this afternoon. So I mean, servers are busy, right? Uh, I I think I was logged in since sometime yesterday, and I just never logged out. I don't know. Oh, That's... so what I'm hearing is the reason why servers were busy is because Jeff never logged out. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I know that's not the case either. It's just the way um somebody rolls. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, was that you know... like if now? Here's the thing. Maybe it was just you. Well, okay, it could be just me, considering I used to pay for the site and I no longer pay for the site, and he is punishing people who do that. Just hey! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right into this. All right, so it's been a minute, um, a little over a month, uh, but uh, the, the beginning of the month uh, started with me going up to Minnesota, and uh, there, there I got a, uh, a twins cap, and I got to see the win, the the twins uh, uh, the get swept by the Yankees in their postseason run. It was mm -hmm. very sad. Oh. But uh, on my way out, I was at the air airport and I picked up myself a twins hat because I didn't have a twins hat. Oh, uh, so despite it was the fact that after they lost. Uh -huh. <laughs> the twins hat. Uh, my sister got uh, got married. It, uh, uh, it, it was um, it was an overwhelming experience for me because I was an usher and things like there really wasn't much direction to to everything, and then a whole bunch of different people were telling me to do different things, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And I was like, I'm just gonna stand here and look pretty. And uh, my feet hurt from the dress shoes. Um, yeah. So, uh, got to play with a few people. Got to, or and uh, got to. Uh, hang out a little bit with uh, my former roommate Keith. Well, up there, so I got got to have some me time. Yay! And they came back, and there was just pretty much work, wow, and try a few new recipes, and uh, uh, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. 
my my current plans are trying to do a taco mac and cheese casserole. Okay. Just mac and cheese casserole, but with taco seasoning. And then I'm gonna try. I'm I'm trying to figure out a uh, a sloppy Joe meatloaf to be determined. Yeah, I haven't gotten to it. I got ingredients. I just haven't done it yet. That's this weekend. Sure. Other than that, that's I'm back at overnights. That's another thing that just started. Which is why we are showing this late. That's right? why we're in the evenings. Yeah. Which is great for a lot of people who listen to our shows, except for Lloyd. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe some others. Anybody who's in a time zone before us. (laughs) Because now it's at night. Or in the morning, depending on how far, you know, considering if it's five hours ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Good morning, Lloyd. He's either either calling me a son of a bitch or he's... (laughs) I don't know. One of the two. Uh, I, I accept either. That is awful, but so fun. Yeah. It's it's fine. I understand. I'm sorry, Lloyd. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Damon, what have you been up to? Just to both. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, um, the big thing, obviously, is um, I turned 40. Yay! Ooh! Yeah. Is it 40 hey. over the hill? Huh? Is it 40 over the hill? I don't know. No, I thought it was 50. I swear anyway. to God, I remember like black balloons, a lot of things saying over the hill when my parents turned 40. But when is someone over the hill? It's 40. Oh, <laughs> old and past one's prime is. The... Yeah. yeah. Well, fuck that noise. Like, who even d- deemed that as a reality thing? Hallmark. Well, well, think of this. Shit. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. So, it, over the hill would be like, you know, you're halfway through. Through your lifespan, and considering right now the the average life expectancy of a U.S. human is less than. 80 and less than even 100. Okay. 40 is right around halfway through. So, mm, got it. All right. Anyway, um, so yes, um, I, I turned 40. I had a really nice birthday. Um, for those that don't know, I went to Vegas. Um, that was part of my birthday celebration. Me and a friend of ours um, celebrated our birthdays together by going to on this trip for a few days. That was really fun. Um, Vegas was great. Saw some shows. Um, the day of my birthday, though, um, I took the day off work because, yes, I'm not going to work on my birthday. <laughs> um, and um, uh, ended up, Jim ended up taking me to a really nice dinner. Um, at the Capitol Grill here in in, Lo- in in Louisville, Cincinnati, and um, really great, really great dinner. And um, I spent the weekend just enjoying, like not doing much. That was my plan: was to like just chill and relax and enjoy doing nothing. So, um, forty was great, and now I'm forty, and that's really it. Um, <laughs> earlier this week. Like at, basically the week after my birthday, I went on um, a chorus retreat uh, in beautiful Madison, Indiana, Clifty Falls. We go there pretty much every year. Um, I had a, it was it's always a good and bad experience because it's just a lot of work because we're getting pre- we're preparing for the holiday concert, but it's really nice to just be around our. Um, each other and the camaraderie and all that stuff. Um, although this year it was, they normally do like a fire pit and on Saturday and, um, it was a little cold. So, um, (laughs) so while a fire pit is nice, the heat only goes so far. And, um, I was not 
having that. So I, while it was, while it's great to like hang out and everything, um, I was done maybe about 15, 20 minutes in. So I left and um, went to bed early. And despite the, we got the hour back for the time sink, you know, the falling back hour, um, I slept because, um, yeah, being outside and being cold was just not in the cards for me. You're a um, southern kudos boy. To those, yeah. You're kudos vulnerable to, those to, to cold. Oh, yeah. Um Good, you know, good for those who did. And I mean, it was nice hearing from like a couple of our new members that were really happy to like um, um, the camaraderie and be there and all that stuff. So that's always one of the positives of the um, retreat weekend. Um, and finally, um, had a couple of events and I'm going to one next weekend. Um, but the Scorpius had our anniversary um, at Argos Bar. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, always, we always, you know, have an auction and we do some really fun things and, um, it was good to see some people and be at the bar cause I hadn't really been out in a while. So some leather fun. Yeah. Hey. I have a quick question for you, David, on the Argos thing. So Argos celebrated 10 years, right? As a bar. I believe so, or something along those lines recently. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, I follow Gonzo, like, I think on Instagram or something. And there was a post that it confused me because it made it kind of read, like, <laughs> the bar was closing. But, like, that wasn't yeah. what was said. It was like, thank you so much for the support over all the years and blah, 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 blah. And I'm kind of like, <clears throat> what the fuck? Yeah. So, essentially, there has been there have been rumors about <clears throat> the bar closing. Excuse me. Ooh. Um, that the bar is closing. Um, it has been kind of um, recently one of the owners passed away, I think over mm. the summer, if not in the spring. Mm. And um, the other owner, um, who was his partner, um, as well as his partner, um, were was not, I don't want to say not as invested, but just was, was you know, there's not been a lot of interaction with the bar like he's there and he enjoys it but i don't think it was his like big thing to own the bar mm -hmm. so there's been this confused like concern that they there's talk of them selling the bar there's talk of them um closing the bar but it is apparently all rumor and that's what the gonzo's video was about he posted this uh -huh. video and posted something about like 40 years because it was kind of to just show hey we're still here we're still open, like come and celebrate with us, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I, I've, I was one of the people that heard, had heard the rumor and I'm always at the per of the effect of, unless I'm hearing it directly from like, say, if I had heard it from Gonzo or heard it from one of the owners, well, the owner or something along those lines, I might be more apt to believe it, not necessarily see it's a rumor. But I'm right. hearing it through like the grapevine as opposed to anything else. So right. it's open. And they I, as far as I see, they have stuff planned for the rest of the year. So um go and support your local leather bar because that's the only one in the vicinity of the city. Um <laughs> anyway. Right. <laughs> well, and I've been there. Like I haven't been there recently. It's been a number of years, but you know. So that's why I asked because I was like, I thought, oh, if it's closing, that's really shitty. Only because yeah. you know, there wouldn't be that It'd many be left. So. The, yeah, it would be like one of the last ones in the area, like in the tri-state area that would be open. That's a left, like a designated, fully like full-on leather bar, right? Anyway, so we right along, Gary. Uh, was a little bit of like rinse and repeat. Um, work was work for the most part. Uh, I have not <laughs> so dispel any to dispel rumors. Speaking of at work, um, I have not been offered a position, nor have I accepted a position. So. <laughs> Uh, there was a posting internally for a corporate trainer position. I did put my hat in for it. It has not been discussed with me. So the reason why there's been rumor and lots of people asking me is because last week I actually trained uh, and instructed 
about a program that is one of the things that I do. And I also helped like the person who's the manager that normally is the instructor because they had someone who was working a special schedule that differs on different days. So they couldn't make the class during the day. So everyone thinks that just because I started doing that, like suddenly now I'm the trainer. And I was like, nope. <laughs> Not officially. Yeah, no paid differential. Nobody's discussed anything with me. Don't even know like what the heck's going on. So, But it was good uh, to get back in front of people and talk and, you know, instruct mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, DF planning stuff's going on. It's mostly just been uh, getting the hotel aspect of things squared away with the booking of the rooms. Uh, Mm -hmm. so we're at like 56%, I think, uh, registration spots, uh, filled most of the host hotel is sold. It's not completely sold out, which we're not far away. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, a couple days ago I had a birthday. Uh, Happy birthday. Thanks. That's right. Oh, wow. At one point in time, we had like three Scorpios on the show. Four. Wait. Three. Yeah. Three. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so my birthday was uneventful, which is okay. My father asked me how I felt being older. I said, yeah, didn't really matter much. Um, I didn't make a big thing out of it last year. And I didn't really think about it much this year, other than now that I'm a year older, it takes me longer to remember like how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like it was easy for the past year because the number was sort of milestone ish. Now you move yeah. into the in between where it's like you have to think about like, oh, I got to add one or two yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. It's one of the weird things about being like a, like a, I'm, I was born in 79. So it's like, if you're like, I, I think like it's easy to add when you're like, oh, it's 40. So boom. But when you're like, it's 23. Um, wait, what year was that? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I get it yeah. easy. Yes. Cause you have the zero at the end of yours. Yeah. So I got I got 80. And all you need to do to figure out my age is just add the first three digits of the year. And then the one stitch is the one stitch. Aha. Because yeah. like, yeah, like next a... year it's 2 plus 0 plus 2, which is 4, and then 0. So I turn 40. This year it was 2 plus ah. 0 plus 1, which is 3, and 9, so 39. Hmm. My dad was asking me something about remembering because I was talking about how difficult it was to remember what my age is. And I said, well, with his, because he was born in a year with a one, like, I'm like always thinking about when the next one is. So like 2021. So in two years, he will reach like a, he'll be a, a year with a zero kind of thing. So ah, just a random thing that I'm sure Philip's now appreciating in the chat, given because if I recall correctly, he's a math teacher. Um, (laughs) yeah so uh and then i wrote um brain stimulation so uh i find more than ever like i'm being drawn to entertainment that like kind of makes me think or gives me stuff to think about Mm -hmm. um so as part of my birthday Although it was last Tuesday, because it was cheapy night at the movies, I went and saw Joker. Huh. Uh, it's already been out for over a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't realize it had been out that long. Um, it is now, su- and I say supposedly or allegedly, because I don't have the actual figures, the highest grossing comic book genre based film in existence. Hmm. Um,. Although it's not technically canon, like because it's a whole new concept, like a backstory, like an origin story, I guess I should say, of Joker from the Batman DC. So comics, it, it's, and I can't stop thinking about it. Sort of in a way, <laughs> I get now why so many people say it's a thinker kind of thriller ish. 
and then before the show i was getting lost in youtube like ending explanation theory thing movies so yeah i highly recommend if anybody's interested in the film is aware of it to go see it now there's all the speculation about whether or not there will be a sequel because there was never intended to be a sequel. It was meant to be a one time standalone. Like Todd Phillips is like, I'm just going to do a character study film. That'll be it. But of course, because it made a ton of money. <laughs> Hollywood's trying to figure out what to do, but yeah. Interesting. Um, and, um, yeah, like like the stuff with work, you know, helping with uh, doing some training instruction. That was just kind of like, it gets like creative juices flowing and stuff like that. And trying to help people, you know, be better at what it is that what they're doing and and that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's things of that nature. So, well, I'm trying to think if there's really anything else that happened in the past month. Not specifically that's coming to mind at the moment, so. Yeah. Oh. That only means one thing. It's time for this. Time to catch up on some feedback. Uh, Gary, what's been going on over in Facebook land? Uh, in Facebook, we got a series of likes. Uh, so we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us uh, our page on Facebook. Charles Anderson, James Franklin, Antonio Lopez, Gregory Keefe, and Thorsten Schalk. Uh, we also got a Facebook comment post. This is regarding COL 527, which was our What's Going On, our WGO for August, September, like two-month catch-up. Jay Yaspa said, Aw, I just want to give Howard a hug. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. In regards to his voice, the voicemail we got. Yeah. So Howard had called in and kind of opened up and talked about some things from his personal life, and so He's we in the get a, it. Telegram chat. So if anybody want, is not in the Telegram chat, wants to go over and give him a hug through there, you're very welcome to. And if you happen to meet him in person, he'll even probably welcome a mouth hug. So there you go. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> just saying <laughs> and uh adjacent to facebook land is uh it's sister country instagram uh instagram we got the following followers this month roy the cub 69 no suggestion in the name there uh <laughs> ca7304728 ralpo Craiger underscore cub eric underscore the underscore red wolf chub with two Bs, Cub06 and Osokiraj38. So thanks for following us on Insta. Most of our Insta is like, hey, we had a new episode. Which reminds me, I got a post <laughs> about last week's episode. They should yeah. be posting automatically, aren't they? Nope. They're not? No. So I'm doing all that work for nothing? What work? No. There's a plugin on the site. Uh oh. Uh oh. That, that says post to Instagram. So I've been putting the thing in there, hitting OK, and I don't know. Anyways, Damon, what's been going on over the YouTube's? Um, so we have a new YouTube subscriber. Welcome, Mark Eugene Garcia. Yay! And we got a few comments. Um, <laughs> We're going to skip one of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you because that missed the pre-show, all I'm going to say about this is the Even first... Even pre-stream. The pre yeah. The pre-stream. The first one, the first comment that we got made David say, what did you say? I need a minute. And just like, I need a minute. <laughs> and just like put his headset down, walked away from the camera. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need a minute. Um. It, it is it is so for those that wish to know unless if it, unless we've removed it um, it is on episode col it's on col 483 haunters against hate so it's been a while um, since we you know had that show um, so yeah 
Um, if you want to go look at that, you can go look at that on your own time. Um, I am <laughs> I am not going to put I am not going to put any more energy into it. Moving it's just on. a bunch of uh, silliness, ridiculousness is what we think. Um, on COL um, 528, which was our what is sexual satisfaction, um, a birdie Bert face asked, how common is it for gay men to want to please the other than receive? It seems in hetero world, men are more prone to receiving than giving. Not all, of course. So uh, <clears throat> let's talk about that. <laughs> well, because I like I think there's something that you know, Bertie Bert face. I just I don't want to That's call you Bert so bad. Um, <laughs> I think there's something that he's onto. Like you know, asking about you know whether or not there's a focus on pleasing or not. Um, for me, yes. It, it really depends on the person. But, like, I mean, I, I get where he's coming from, though. Like, because, well, you know, more more often than not, at least what we're told, what we're sold, is that men don't focus on pleasing women. They only focus yeah. on them getting pleased, having their own mm -hmm. pleasure, and then, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And that's kind of what we've been sold for years in media in TV shows, well, media is technically TV shows, but you know what I mean. Like it's it's that's something that has always kind of been out there, whether for the the laugh or the the actual seriousness of things. But we also know that that's not one hundred percent the case. You know, one hundred percent of the time, as Jeff has said, it depends on the person. And I will, I think, one hundred percent agree with that. That it depends on the person and the activity and what is agreed upon between those two people at that point in time are those three people and are those mood. multiple people. Yeah. 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 And, so, it, and, it, and it, yeah, I, I think most of the time, if you, you're thinking that the giving sexual satisfaction, so with the end result being coming in one way, shape or form in one hole or another, or not even in one um, on certain platforms, um, <laughs> uh, sometimes the sexual satisfaction isn't a come to so uh, I, I I think that it, it really depends on several different factors and I think if you're dealing with uh, commonality I think it's probably more common that in the end both parties want, or both parties come in one way, shape, or form. And being received, if that means like pitching, catching versus type of thing. Well, I, I will I say know. this like, I think it's easier for men to have an orgasm and to ejaculate, like, than. And this is completely my ignorance as a cis gay male <laughs> uh, that it is comparatively to a woman. That's the, what the bill of gold, the bill of goods has been sold as, and I don't know any different right now. So because of that, I think like it's just understandable or expected, like in a matching like male identified relationship, like that it's easier to, to have that as the as the end result. Hmm. So, and as far as gay men like wanting to please the other, I, I think a little bit comes into it, like not only who you are, but like about your personality. Like, and if you're mm -hmm. like wanting to be served versus serving. Yeah. So, like, I know some guys that are like more dominant, just period. And so, like them getting off is the priority so like they're they're not the so i guess they're acting more like what is being described you know as a in a presumption of hitter you know genius world where you know men are just there to, to get off so yeah i don't know i mean uh we could probably maybe ask uh our resident doctor 
<laughs> Cisco would be like, hey, are there any studies out there about the dominance of, like, wow. gay oh, men? Or, wait a minute. We, we also have our sexual therapist friend, who. So that, that is uh, true. That might be another insight. Who is actually scheduled to be on very soon. Dang Yay. <laughs> All right. So we're running along. Um, from COL 518, also from Birdie, or, which was our favorite fantasy show. We also got a comment from Birdie Birdface. He says, great comic, co- great podcast, excuse me. Topics like this could go a long way with identity, self-confidence, and giving the security that they are not alone with their fantasies. Thanks. Thank you, Birdie. And then finally, on COL 529, which was our Let's Talk About Sex on Incels, um, Oscar Orozco Orohel said, um, he says, charity cages are incel play. I'm thinking he meant chastity cages are incel play. And I, well, I, I, I'm going to say they are not. And the only reason being that typically are volunteering in one state or another to put yourself in chastity or be put in chastity. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, in some sense, kind of, yeah. agree. there is an agreement. And the yeah. only thing is just because you're in chastity, does that mean that you're being celibate? Also true. Also true. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't really like, I wasn't sure what they, what they meant when they said this. Mm -hmm. I was like charity cages, charity cases, chastity cages. Like to me, there was a couple of different ways that Mm -hmm. could have been maybe what they meant. So Oscar, if you happen to listen to this episode or watch it on YouTube, if you get back to us, we can kind of get a better idea of what you meant by that case. I wasn't really Mm -hmm. some clarification. Sure. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's a typo of it's supposed to be chastity. Or perhaps it's just like the language barrier issue. And, you know, we can also be very ignorant and not know what the hell a charity cage is. I'm going to chalk it up to that. So, yeah. Uh, Over in the uh, Twitterverse, uh, we've had a a few people. We've got uh, Victor Faraz, Roy the Cub, Ursus uh, Brunitus, Gustavo51864894. Know how I feel about these numbers, folks. Uh, Jose Gone, uh, four, 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 five, one, six, nine, two, nine. <laughs> Sorry, G- Gary was was like moving his cursor, and his name popped up over the name, and it threw me off. Oh, sorry. I was highlighting the numbers. I was trying to figure out if they were phone numbers. I was like, "What's up with these long ass numbers?" I was like. Yeah, Anyways. see see my problem? Anyways, uh, we have <laughs> uh, Subon Garado, uh, Ralpo67, which I think was also on Instagram, um, yeah. Bert underscore Faith, uh, Daguma2019. Uh, I'm going to say this is Chubby BCX, even though the U in the Chubby is an X. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Bear, FLL, and Growling Grumman. Mm-hmm. Gary, tell us about the shows that we had since the last time we've had one of these episodes. Uh, well, uh, the last time we did a WGO, I guess is what we're calling them, the What's Going On, uh, that was CWL 527, where we caught up on August and September because we missed doing it at the end of August. And then uh, we took a week off and we did a flashback to our first high school crushes in the CWL 231. Um, and then uh, we did another What Is. We talked about sexual satisfaction, which we already had feedback on. And then we had Drew on as a guest and we talked about LTAS incels. It was a Let's Talk About Sex. And then last week, Damon was busy playing in the woods with the gay men for the chorus. <clears throat> apparently not enjoying outdoor fires. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but 
but I bet it was hot inside. Uh, <laughs> so... Actually, no. Um... <laughs> Let me have my that. fantasy. <laughs> All these years you've been going away to the gay men's chorus retreat time to think, and I'm always like, it's a big orgy. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm going to ask the people that I know that you know that are at the game. It's cross. They're going to be like, all right, how much hooking up is going on at this retreat? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, I almost made David spit thing. Um, we'll see how many of them agree with him. And it's like, none. We're very. <laughs> I, I, okay. I will probably say, do things happen? Probably more than likely. Yes. It's uh <laughs> do you participate? <laughs> Do I do I personally participate? Maybe. Yeah, maybe is a good word. Maybe. Have I had experiences while there? Yes. Did it happen this year? No. No. Is that enough? Are you good? Satisfied? Uh, I am busy <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking at Philip's live chat. He said, I'm sure they're very good orally. Ah! But although, uh, although the pun uh, it gets a little a uh, little weird when I would, I would almost want to put that as AU, etc. Instead of R, R and then we would have anyways. Mm-hmm. So anyways, while David was busy playing with the boys, with the men's, and uh, whoever was at the event, we uh, Jeff and I talked about High Bear Nation. Not the event in St. Louis, although we did briefly mention that, but that wasn't the point of the, the show. We're, we we just actually it because of the title. Which is actually the same weekend as when we were in town. I think when you had the podcast. Yep, yes. it was that weekend. <laughs> Purely nice. coincidence. Nice. So if you'd like to see our, our twosome show, it was just Gary and me. Yeah. Okay. Gary was a little bit. Gary and I were both a little bit bigger because we had more space to fill. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I'm are you not calling me? Me? No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, are you calling? Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. <laughs> We're just cruising right on down the road into this. And all because uh, Tumblr decided to to make poor decisions. Uh, we now do Twitter posts. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, one that I liked recently. Uh, from Benny to Pooh. Uh, yeah, Benny to Pooh. Uh, want a taste? Oh my, hold up. Oh, wait. Um, oh, yes, I do. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Everywhere. And I, I, I don't I mean that, that I... just mean that nicely framed butt, the, the entire package, but. Yes. 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 <laughs> The answer is yes. <laughs> Let me pull the image up just to be sure. <laughs> Two out of three podcast hosts say. Oh, well, hello there. <laughs> yes. Well, the comment thread is a whole lot of like. Yes, yes, yes. Hell yeah. Oh, yes. Breakfast is served. Ooh, Ooh, we do. Yes, sure, perfect. daddy. It's all very much to the affirmative. <laughs> Uh, there's a uh, one with uh, S- Stitch licking the screen. Mm-hmm. I-, I thought I had responded to this one actually directly, but I didn't. So, yeah, it's okay. There's a few others. Mm-hmm. Yes, Benny has been one of my like. Like he was on. He was one of the Tumblr people as well. He was on Tumblr for a, a while as well, and um, he was one of my like. Ooh, I gotta follow you and. See what you want to, because look at that. I mean, Follow. Oh, he's just a wonderful yep. package. He's got the beard. He's got the butt. He's got the belly. He's got the three he's Bs. Also, he's also versatile. 
even more. <laughs> I mean, check, 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 check. There you go. Hmm. Chicken and boxes. Boxes. All right, Damon, what do you got? Um, so I actually shared this a while ago, and and I when I shared it, I had so many people like it that I have to share it with you guys. So it's called um, Happy Hump Day, and it's from um, TJ Win XXX. Um, and it says, "Morning and Happy Hump Day." I think I will just wear, I think I'll just wear this today, and it is um, a very sexy daddy bear. Um, and a hat and some boots, and that's it. It's not like you need much more. Well, it yeah. does have a ring on a finger, but that's it. I like mean... <laughs> baseball cap, yeah, boots, and a phone. Boots. That's all the man got going on. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. no. Uh, <laughs> this is also. It's yeah. also a. a a a preview of is just for fans page too so for yeah. this entire tighter yeah. quintet and so. somebody responded in the comment thread dressed for success but um yeah oh, speaking of which here you go chat mm-hmm. let's see sexy, sexy. very mm-hmm. very nice had it and and yeah yeah a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> I, so I just read Philip's comment in the live chat. Since group chats are now a thing on Tumblr, someone posted a pic of them naming a group chat, Bring Back the Porn. Ha! Nice. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Gary. And it's a daddy bear, so that definitely checks boxes. Yeah. Um, so this lovely gentleman, I've had the pleasure of meeting. I don't know him very well, but <gasps> that may change at some point. Oh my God, uh, y'all. And I may have posted about him before. He goes by Skin yes. Earth online. He's Canadian. He's incredibly nice personality wise. Like in the times that I've met him, he's a naturist, uh, which means he likes to be nude often. And the title of this one is in case of emergency. And then in the actual caption of the photo, it says, comma, rip briefs. (gasps) Y'all. David needs a moment. So, so like, um, I found, like, him recently on Twitter. Because I was another one. He's another, like, Tumblr, like, like, refugee, as it were. And I was like, oh. And he got very busy very quickly and posted a lot of stuff. And um, I happened to find him while I was at work. So <laughs> it was like, oh, oh, oh. Somebody so... <laughs> has to go to the bathroom for a little bit. Yeah. Well, not that, but just it's, I had to like, put Dakota the phone Porter. away and like. You know what that means. It, Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, I very much was a. I had to follow. I immediately followed and have been looking at his stuff and I reblog his stuff or retweet his stuff because he's just. I mean, yeah. He's another like really like. And the fact that now I know like he's a super nice guy too, that kind of like adds on to it. So like. Take me now. Like. <laughs> like well, maybe you should try check, to check, come check, to check, an check. event in April and then you might get a chance to meet him. Oh, because he's been here the past two years. Well then, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Damon, you may yeah. have to anyway, pull the and, trigger. Finally, <laughs> I know, right? Finally, and make maybe go fucking drink square. It's been a while. I should probably go. I mean, Gary, <laughs> it's only been, it's six been a while. Years. Never. <laughs> You like that? Did, did you like that? <laughs> you know, for it being nine o'clock at night, it's a bit overcast. Little, feel right. Just, just a little shade. <laughs> a little. Very, very shady. Anyways, moving on into the links. Uh, this time, Damon and I both have links. Um, I found, Ooh. well, uh, for various reasons, um, Tobias Ellahammer is a uh, really great choreographer. 
in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, he did, he, I think I might have linked it before, um, a uh, thing where he went around the world and got people to dance with him uh, to Michael Jackson's Black and White. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I apparently, remember that. yeah, he, he made, apparently he made a, is basically made a trilogy of Michael Jackson songs. Um, and this one that I found was his uh, uh, version for Scream. The actual song Scream doesn't start until like five minutes into the 11 minute video <laughs> or something. Oh, good Lord. Uh, so there's a lot of precursor to it, but it's, it's these, these, it's just artistry. It's mm-hmm. amazing, amazing choreography, artistry, and does it all over the, all over the place. Uh, he's got this uh, adorable uh, uh, kid that's uh, part of kind of like these trio of people, him and uh, Lady and and this kid. Like they they pick up this hat, which is very Michael Jas- Jackson X uh, esque. Uh, X, mm-hmm. X. And, and the the song starts when all three of them put on the, on the hat in three different locations and then they start doing the whole actual screen dance mm. uh, but there's all this kind of like prologue to it. it so it does have a lot of build up but it's well worth the waiting i think it's just it's it's very artful hmm. cool very cool. I have to watch that after we're done recording. Yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty amazing. And then, yeah, I've, I've got subscribed to his uh, channel. And well, let's see other uh, ones he did as part of this trilogy. Hmm. It was it was black and white. It was Scream, and then there's another one. YouTube is loading so slowly. There's one here that says Janet Jackson Burn It Up featuring Missy Elliott, but I don't know if that's no, part that, of the trilogy. No, that's a different one. Oh, no, that is part of the trilogy. The Jackson trilogy, he calls it. Oh, okay. This is ah. Janet Jackson Burn It Up featuring Missy Elliott, uh, Michael Jackson Black and White, or White, and uh, and Scream. Scream. So that's Janet, Michael, Michael, and Janet. Yeah. Cool. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like 5.13, 6.35, and then 11.21 for screen. He had a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he also references the past videos, I think, though. Like, there's some timestamp stuff in the beginning. Yes, I'm actually watching it while we're talking. Um, so. Interesting. All right. I can't watch the whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. Some thinking. Actually, let me let me let me link the video for the people in chat. Sure. Thank you. There it is. Anyways, move it on, David. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. So. Oh um... no. I did not know what this was until it loaded, and now I am just. I don't. Uh... Go ahead, David. So my pick is uh, my link this week um, is actually something that I literally saw this morning and was crying, laughing so hard at it and didn't make it through just because it's so hilarious. So this is called Toad Sing Chandelier. Um, so, you know, Toad, which is the um, Toad still character from. Mario Brothers, all of those videos, Nintendo, what have you. And he is singing Chandelier. Um, we all know, like, in his, when he's been voiced, he has a kind of a gravelly, you know, kind of voice, um, higher pitchy kind of thing. <laughs> so he's um, singing the song Chandelier, which is a uh, um, Sia song. So we, I think most people know the song. If you don't, um, this don't. will come as a complete surprise to you so I, I, so Jeff if you don't know the song <laughs> I recommend you Ugh. listen to the scene 
song, S I A Chandelier song first, because oh, you'll because you'll actually you'll you'll understand why when you get to the Toad sing Chandelier, why it is so hilarious. Now, granted, it's probably oh, hilarious God. on its own, but yeah, but yeah, I I I list, I found this this morning or this afternoon, and I think it was like a Bearsby Gaming Yahoo our Facebook group, and I just. I was laughing so hard. I was coughing because <laughs> it was so funny. Um, yeah, I had to stop at forty seconds in just now because I almost was going to start crying because it's just so, yeah. so, so it, it's st- yeah, stupidly funny. Yeah. Okay. I also have an assignment to watch afterwards. All right, time yeah. for let's move on to Gary's Netflix picks of the month. Uh, if you're into documentaries, there's one on Netflix called Inside Bill's Brain. It's about Bill Gates. And it's so good. It's a mini series documentary. Um, the whole thing is about three hours long, I want to say. I think it's like in four segments, maybe, or three. Um, it's first, not first person, it's first hand. Uh, the documentarian journalist talks with Bill, but goes over a whole bunch of stuff like about his background, him and Melinda, Microsoft, what he and the Melinda have been doing with the foundation. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, this is what I was talking about, like brain stimulation. I was just like, wow. Bill Gates is a bit of a speed reader. He, on average, reads uh, apparently upwards of 15 books a week. Mm. Yeah. It also explains why he's like so smart in some ways, like, and like has like incredibly high recall mm. for stuff. Like, it's just, it was really, really something else. Um, it gave me insight to somebody that I barely knew anything about, and like, like I, I couldn't have any presumptions or, you know, about him after I watched it. I was like, wow, that's really something else. Um, and there's it's interesting because there's some mundane, silly question stuff in it, but then there's like more thought provoking things as well. Um, he apparently loves Diet Coke uh, hmm. because he does like a reading getaway kind of thing every so often. And he goes away to this like little cottage that he and Melinda own. And it's hysterical to me because he opens the fridge and it's full of nothing but Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, OK, so someone prepared your space before you arrived. But that's all you have. Like, yeah. Um, for those of you that do not know, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is on Netflix. Season 4 just released last Thursday, I want to say, on the 7th, or maybe it was on Monday the 4th. It was just this past week. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed this new iteration series. I fell in love with it when Season 1 came out. It was kind of obvious at the end of Season 1 that there was going to be a Season 2, and that's because Netflix agreed to a two-season contract. They've extended it. It's now seasons three and four. Season four is so obvious that it needs to continue because, yeah, (laughs) I can't even give anything away as to what the hell happens at the end. But it's really interesting. Um, It's a it's a whole like role reversal dynamic concept, like for people who love Steven Universe and how there's like all this representation about like non-binary and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's not exactly that, but uh, one of the things that I can't escape from it, but I actually truly enjoy, is that it is a female-dominated cast and crew and creation. So it just definitely has a different flavor to it, but it's pretty damn good, like, as far as I'm concerned. Um, So, and, like, I'm not a big animation person, at least I wasn't in the past, so, like... But then I realized what my next selection is. <laughs> it's also <laughs> animation. And this one was s- sort of recommended for me by Netflix. And I was c- very curious about it. Uh, Green Eggs and Ham. So it's a Netflix series. It's an original. Contracted by them. It is the Dr. Seuss characters. But if you know the Green Eggs and Ham story, it's a short book. Like, it doesn't, like... It doesn't take long to read. Like, it's a bedtime story kind of thing you can do with little kids. I had Dr. Seuss books when I was a kid. Mm. Uh, the animation in it is really interesting. Uh, it's it's 
Dr. Seuss, like it's a, it's very Seussical and it's like, you know, words and descriptions and stuff, but it has this whole story thread line about Sam I am and Guy and uh, they take the concepts of what you know from the book about like, I will not eat it with a fox. I will not eat it in a box. I will not eat it in a train. I will not, you know, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But they took all of those and they broke them out into episodes. <laughs> so like each thing is an episode, but like there's this whole overarching storyline kind of thing uh, about a chick giraffe. And there's some really great voice work that's in it. Um, Eddie Izzard, who I absolutely adore as a comedian is in it. So that like tickled me to no end. Um, yeah, Adam Levine is Sam I Am. Uh, Michael Douglas is Guy. Like, right? Like, you. So, this is what I'm going to say about this. If you have Netflix and you have an opportunity to see it, give it a chance. Like, I watched the. It's a 13 episode season. I watched the first two episodes. They're about 20 some minutes each. It didn't pull me in like She Ra and some of the other stuff that I've watched from Netflix where I'm just like. I have to binge it. I have to binge it now. Um, but I went back mm-hmm. and I, and I ended up finishing it uh, yesterday and over the weekend being off from work and stuff. And I was like, wow, it's, mm. it's interesting. So yeah. I, so if you're, if you kind of like that stuff, like I, I would say hmm. consider seeing it. So, but yeah, a uh, yeah. little bit of a busy or month for me, but um, yeah. <laughs> So I didn't see all that much on there, but, and now that it's, you know, fall and regular, the big channels are back on making their shows and stuff. So, but, uh, honestly, like, I don't really watch that much TV. Like I have yeah. no clue what the new shows are that are on anymore. Um, Same. Even so, though I have technically live broadcast TV ish through sling. I don't really watch like I don't watch the broadcast too like the like NBC ABC because I don't you don't get those but I get like Food Network and USA and things like that so it's weird I don't know I can't you know so I'm gonna warn y'all right now when we get to the what's going on in November I will probably talk a lot about Disney Plus because I signed up for it <laughs> it starts on the 12th and oh, that's two days from now I know. Um, there is a shit ton of things that are coming to it. Um, mm-hmm. stuff from the vaults. Uh, I'm also super excited about the Mandalorian as the original series. It's going to be, uh, based on the star Wars universe. There's some other things mm-hmm. that are coming. Like I just, I'm, I hate to say it, but I think it's going to be my next go-to streaming platform. Like that. I'm just going to end up watching a whole bunch of content on. Mm-hmm. So, and, I'm kind of okay with that. Like, it makes me wonder not because Jeff, you said at the top of the show, I think that you was it Netflix that you dropped. Yep. Yeah, and see, I think I might end up dropping Hulu, but I don't know for certain. I have to figure that out yet because I only watch a couple of shows really on there, like Drunk History. Um, I'm watching the last season of Will and Grace, and ABC's How to Get Away with Murder. Which is still crazy and riveting, which is weird, but that's Shonda Rhimes for it. <laughs> um, and a, like a couple of game shows, but even then, I'm not like that big of a thing about watching them. So I don't know. That's where I'm kind of like, mm, we'll see if I keep it or not. But yeah, so that's what's that's what's up and coming for me in terms of like stuff I expect to really get excited about. <laughs> Starts yeah. streaming November twelfth. Hey, guess what? Uh, I have signed up for Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are, no. It's six ninety nine a month. I, I, I'm sure. Unless you want to spend seventy bucks for an entire year. Or if you were crazy and you went ahead and got the three year deal. Ooh. Which, oh, for for the most part, it, 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 it's worth it, uh, just because of the content and stuff. But hey, guess what? That's the end. Oh. 
Well, anyways, contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, uh, six year otherwise, at 361 CL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets at uh, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course on YouTube. At Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our social entourage chat uh, at uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we are will be airing these shows uh, at uh, tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get merchandise such as a consensus by four play shirt that uh, uh, Damon's wearing. Uh, I've got the proud out loud shirt. If you want to do something that's more pride ish and uh, Gary has a hat on. <laughs> so you can see what the hat. hats look up. Like, yeah, <laughs> the hat. We see it. I can see it. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, you can also become a patron. We appreciate all of our pa- patrons. Uh, we just got got paid. We thank you so much. Uh, we've got a few new patrons, and you'll see some of the names of our current patrons uh, right when we get done here. Um, you can uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts. Um, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts, and of course on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Hat Box Puppy Box Cup Box. Some sort of thing. Uh, you can find me at Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites, including Bear 401. Eh. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. That's if you can even get on Bear 411. Fact. Fact. Truth. Call back. Anyways. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere on uh, line as GearBear73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. I uh, forgot. Yeah. Why was it? Damn it! It's it's in one days, eight hours, forty five minutes, and ten seconds. <laughs> All right. So this is what I have to say about that. Do do we know for certain if Disney Plus is coming to Apple TV or like app the yeah Apple I'm, app TV device? I'm pretty sure that they're going to. Because uh, I keep checking and I can't download the app yet. Well, it's probably Apple because it hasn't launched yet. Yeah, but it's like kind Disney of crazy. Plus it's Disney Plus on Apple app. TV. Disney Plus will also launch on iOS devices and Apple TV. More importantly for Android phone tablets, Disney Plus app will also be available on those devices. Okay. So it's... Yeah, I, I'm... It will be available. I mean, if they they've got a a Hulu, if they've got an app for Hulu on uh, Apple TV, I'm sure they're going to have an app for Disney Plus. For oh Apple TV. my God! I did not realize that all 30 years of The Simpsons are going to be on Disney Plus. Yep. Yeah. Wow. They they're think of everything that disney has ever made and all the properties that they currently own well that's just it like available you have to really think about place. what they own plus yeah they're they're gonna have have originals like high school music high school musical the musical the series uh marvel hero project the world according to jeff goldblum a national geographic thing 
Oh awesome my god. Called Encore, Into the Un- Unknown, Making Frozen 2, Monsters at Work, Timmy Failure, Mistakes Were Made, WandaVision, The Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Marvel's What If, which is kind of cool, a Loki series, the entire oh 30 seasons of, and the entire 30 seasons of The Simpsons. Oh my god. And the Pixar vault. And that yeah. I'm talking about like Disney Plus originals, and then this, and then Disney, Pixar, Marvel, uh, Star Wars, and Nat Geo. Yeah, that's kind of for crazy. six ninety nine. You all have access to a shit ton load of stuff. Mm-hmm. History content. Da, 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 launch. Rolling out worldwide via a staggered rollout plan. First in the U.S., Canada, the Netherlands on the 12th. Then Australia and New Zealand on the 19th. Then United Kingdom, France, Western Europe, and Latin America in 2020. And other regions such as Asia Pacific and Eastern Europe by September of 2021. Mm -hmm. So for all of our U.K. listeners that are listening to the post show, uh, you will get it March 31st of 2020. Interesting. Wow. That is something. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> what? Content available on Disney Plus will also be listed on the Apple TV app. Oh, the Apple TV app itself. So you won't have yeah. to leave the Apple TV app in order to get get onto it. I have to figure out how to That's configure nice. that. So that was quoted in DTC Media from back in August. Uh, November 12th and roll out. Apple iPhones, iPads, iPods, Apple TV, and fully integrated with the Apple TV app. Customers can subscribe to Disney Plus via an in app purchase. Interesting. Well, I already have paid for it. So. Yeah, you, I'm sure you, you'll be able to like just enter a login. So you don't yeah. actually have to have to purchase it through the Apple TV. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Needless to say, all of us, I think, are a little bit excited for Disney Plus. <laughs> this this, this uh, uh, endorsement of Disney Plus was not paid for by Disney. Uh, <laughs> With that, I'm going to stop 